public hearing. Gloria Legacy, LLC, 271 Benson Avenue, Block 269, Block 1.01, VB 2023-10. The applicant proposes to demolish the current two-story mixed-use building and replace it with a four-story mixed-use building. The new building will be 1,606 square feet retail and 18 residential units. Peter Lambert, Well, in your case, I'm, I'm not here. I've got the floor. I'm not here. But I'm a goal to read it. Jim Stoll, S-T-A-H-L, George Stoll, Foley, Mignolo, Hyman Stoll, North Thunder. I'm representing Gloria Legacy. I have, <clears throat> have two witnesses. I try to move quickly, but I don't rush things. Uh, the first gentleman I have is uh, Mr. Neil Young. Uh, Noel Young, who is my engineer. Okay. I'm going to work back on the yeah. uh, Mr. Chairman, you did uh, obviously indicate the uh, proposed development. There was one mistake on the uh, on the uh, report, the staff report to Pam. Uh, there's a difference between pages uh, three and two. You're referring to the engineer report? Yes. Yeah, there's a the proper number is, thank you, uh, Jerry. Uh, it's 15 residential units and it's broken down unit commercial. The narrative on the next page indicated 12 units. All right, uh, I have here this, how many exhibits do you have now? Uh, one, three. I will right, well, we refer to the first one first, obviously. Yeah. What's the, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Before we go any further, does anybody on the board have any uh, conflict with this application? Okay. Thank you, you just reminded me. So you want uh, to uh, swear in the witness? We have jurisdiction? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to mark these here. Can you please state your name, spell your last name for the record? Noel Arian. Last name, Y-O-U-N-G. Do you swear upon the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. You may proceed. Mr. Young, have you appeared before this board before? Yes. Okay, we'll accept you the next one. Thank you very much. Before we continue, I think the member of the board has four questions. Yeah, so just clarification because you said different numbers of residential units. So on page two, it says 18. Then you said 15 somewhere, and then it was 12. So how many residential units well, are I there? Well, if you look on page three, how then, many units? Just how many units? How many units? It should be 15, am I correct? Yes, 15. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. I wasn't criticizing, but just a little confusion. When I read the report, that's what I wanted to clarify. OK, there was confusion on my part, because page two has 18. You said page three had 12. But now what we're hearing is that there are 15. Yes. So yes. there are officially 15. Yes, so 15. Okay. The overview description is the correct description uh, on page two. And what are they on page three? Page three, which is the line design layout, top of the page. So the overview description says 18. Well, I counted 15 residential units, three one bedroom. Well, two bedrooms. Yeah, so Mr. Chair, just yeah. to bring you back to, we had several meetings at the TAC with this application. It originally started at, as 18, but we had several meetings. It's been reduced. The latest iteration was down to 15. I think maybe there might be some older information in the report. Okay. Okay. We've established that tonight's application is 15 15. Yeah. 15 yeah. Yeah, don't reflect it as I'm not complaining or criticizing. I just want to make it clear as you did. That's where it came 15 from. units. Yeah. All right, the first. Uh, Board, you're going to look at uh, knowledge. What's the uh, signature block on the lower right hand side? And, uh, yeah. It's left, this is left 101, block 2, 69. Right, now, there is a sheet that's already in the submission. Is that correct? Yes. Right. I, I always ask three questions. Know, number one, please describe to the board what's there now. Number two, describe to the board what we intend to do there. And number three, uh, please uh, define all the variances or waivers requested. Okay. Uh, the, what they existing now is uh, a shed, is a large shed in this area here. There was a before an existing building that was recently demolished. That was taken out of the building. That basically 
the existing, because the, the grade, the parking, and the, the asphalt there, there is the existing already, fully developed previously. So that's the existing condition, that basically, and uh, for proposed, we are proposing to have a four-story mixtures building, and uh, that's a 15 residential unit and a 1,300 98 square foot of retail and ground floor. We have uh, also proposing to demolish or remove all the sidewalk curb and replace it with a new one. In, in the entire frontage of the project between uh, Ramson Avenue and Talmadge Avenue, Talmadge Street. And we have proposing also to provide uh, 17 70 regular, 70 parking, of which 50 the regular parking and two is handicapped. We're also proposing to provide, the, uh, what do you call it, a vehicle electric charger parking slot. One is a handicap here, and one is not. And then also we are proposing also to have, to do it on this side, where in for the future, there will be one, two, three, four, five parking for electric parking. And, uh, that's basically with regard to the site plan. Now, based on the engineering requirement, because of the demolition of the building, we are providing, even though this is almost entirely in purpose, we are providing a detention basin because of that, which is, uh, we are providing a 24 by 24 inches diameter of 72 feet RCP of detention basin just for control of the, the additional runoff. What's the whole word you say it's a block on your zero two? Uh, well, it's a bigger sheet number, isn't it? This is a sheet uh, four of six, this, uh, uh, three of six. Grading and administrative charge. Grading and utility charge. Uh, on this plan, we are showing the stormwater system, the proposed stormwater system that is going eventually we're going to discharge onto the existing inlet along, along uh, Ramson Avenue. There are also existing utilities, water, gas, and lat uh, sanitary, but all of them will be replaced with the new laterals and all of them. The fire rat, fire collection, uh, FDC collectors here, and there's an existing hydrant where it can connect. landscaping on along the street. We are not putting anything here, no, no trees, no new trees, because there's an overhead wire, uh, overhead electric wire here. But here on the along Calmage Street, we're providing three new trees and we're removing one existing tree. And along the, the parking area, we're covering everything from the outside by putting shrubs along the perimeter. If these are trees and there's evergreen trees there. And in terms of lighting, I think it's very to discuss with the engineer. We're providing LED lighting in one area right here and some under the ceiling, under the ceiling of the Cartelever building. We are attacking four of the LED lighting. So basically that's what it, it, we have here. Now, with regards to uh, Further studies of the architect, we are putting a wall, a firewall, along the study river side. This will be explained with the architect. And because of that, it will, it will have an effect on the parking. I have a Uh, a minor modification in the parking. 
this is the new one that I've got in plan. Wherein we are, uh, there's a new existing wall on the, on the cantilever side of the building. And because of that, we have to push this a little bit, push it a little bit in order to provide some sort of returning and uh, putting this uh, bike, bike rack area here. And also we move the, the trash and papa a little bit in order to uh, take advantage of the area where the area light is. So, so basically the layout is the same, except for it was just move a little bit. We're going to outline the, the variance of the required. Right. Uh, for the variance, one of, one of the variance is the building height from 40 to 43. And the other one is the building coverage from 40% to 52.70%. The impervious coverage is from 90% to 92.1%, the floor area ratio from 1 to 1.86. The parking is also have a barrier. We are proposing 17 parking with one credit or equal to 18. So what is required is 35. And what are the other uses surrounding this building? Are, are any of them are all inconsistent with the uh, Variances which we're seeking now. Uh, yeah, this is a mixture, but some of it, this, this is residential, this is commercial. This yeah. is commercial, and this is residential, this is mixture. And how we can have. Well, the, the okay. existing before is also a, a residential and a commercial. Right. And the square feet, the 10,000 square feet, is consistent with the zone, is that correct? That's correct, yes. And the only variances we're looking for. This building, which is less than 10 per se. Now, why do we need that height? After the walls or floor areas? No, that will be, has to be discussed with the architect here, here, the here, the here for the, for the part of the wall. Fine. Anything else? Now, yeah, there's also another one is the set building setback. Here we are complaining the 10 foot building setback, but on this side, uh, we are we are not. This is just the, the, Frontage building setback is pushed to the lap line along Ramsey Avenue. I was just to, to clarify, the impervious was required as 90%, and we're at 92.1%. Yes, yes but, the, but in uh, the original, before, it, before yes. the building was demolished, before the building was demolished, the impervious area is 94.4% per, per map line. So actually the post now is 92.1. It means that we are actually reducing it if if the city would consider the demolish the demolished building are actually we are reducing the impervious. And how about the the, uh, the building coverage? What was that like before the demolition? Building coverage? No, because the thing is now a per, a per the plan. The only build, the building, existing building is the shed. So that's only 5%. <coughs> Anything else? Well, I think that's, that's the barrier that we have. So I have this with Mr. Chairman. Um, how will the trash be picked up from the building? Is it going to be city trash or is it going to be commercial? The, the ground car? Garbage. Garbage. Garbage, Garbage. Garbage picked up. Has, it, has the owner made a decision whether it's going to be city or private? The, the what? The we'll go, I'll, I'll ask the architect. The, yeah, okay. the and is there any uh, lobby area for uh, yeah, packages and parcels? It's it's always always the architect. Any other members of the board have any questions for this witness? The board professionals have any questions? What is the revision date on those plans? So this one? Uh, February 12, 24. And the song that was uh, division number 2, 212, 24, yeah. and noted as revised per tax times. Okay. Any questions I might ask? I didn't hear it correctly, but the, uh, the 
parking situation was how many spaces? Oh, okay. We have 17 uh, parking space. 15 is regular, 2 is handicap. No, sorry. Wait a minute. I just, I did not check it first. Let's make sure. No, there are speakers. Are there not 18 provided? Giving 17. No, there, there are 17 provided. And you get a credit for 18 because of the yes. empty space. Yeah. And 35 are required? There are, there are eight, there are, there are 35. There are 17 provided. Of the 17, two are handicapped. Five is regular. Ah, two is at 15 is regular. But you're also getting a credit two, for the EV. Right, for that, for, but there is a, uh, uh, one of the handicap is a EV. And one regular is an EV. So you get, you get so one credit. You get one credit, so it's equal to 18. We're leaving a shortfall of 17. Shortfall of 17, yes. But as per the engineer, we, we provide to do it for future five more parking okay. to have an EV space. So just to clarify, you are about asking for a 50% break on parking. Yeah, yes. Yeah, get all that. It's like right? one is to one. 15 <laughs> units. Yeah, that's 15 right. units is one is to one. Your math, your math is correct. My yes. math is correct. Yeah. Yes. So where where do you think everyone's going to park? How are we resolving the parking issue on the 17th of April? Let me bring the architect up on that. Yes. Yes. Excuse me, it's, it's, just to confirm, it's one handicapped space, right? Yes. Not two. No, there should be an H. There's only one H. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's only one H. That one and two electric vehicles. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, you're right. Oh, let's, I'm thank you. So we have one handicapped space, one EV space. Two EVs. <laughs> one two one handicap space, two EV space. So we get two credits, is yeah. that correct? No, Not only, one. Only one. The, the two EV have a one space credit. Oh, because the math, no, the math came out to, to only one. Yeah. So Mr. Yeah, Chair, credit for my just, it's, the right. calculations are in the plan credit. Right. They're on, on number, number 6A. Yes. 35 spaces are required. Correct. 17 are being built. Two of those 17 are going to have EV charging uh, equipment there, so they get to double count those credits. So they're building 17, but they cre get credit for 19. And they're supposed to have 35. 35 is the total requirement, yes. Uh, just so I can, because that's what I would want. We get two credits for the two EV spaces. That's how it comes up to 19. I just want to make sure my math is consistent with yours. We still come up short 16. Yes. Okay, any questions for this one? This wall is impacting the parking spots? They say there's a there pushing wall on the on this side here. Mm -hmm. And then you talked about pushing the parking spots and the trash being smaller? No. This because of this because of this new wall mm -hmm. underneath this piece is cantilever really. And not cantilever. This is clear here, but there is support. There is a wall and support. But this area here underneath is clean. That we have there, now we are providing a wall. And because of that, we have to push this back here and, and uh, pull, pull the bike rack, which is located uh, somewhere here. Mm -hmm. We push it back here. And then the island, uh, there's a peninsula here, in this area where where the light is. So we need to push back the traffic closure here in order to take advantage of the area where the peninsula is so we can push back this parking, push in, and also we have to have a good uh, turning, back turning here. What about when there's snow? Huh? Snow? Is 
snow. Snow. How are we going to deal with when there's a snow? Where is the, assuming it, there, it snows again as much as it has in the past, uh, which is a good assumption, where is the snow going to go that is plowed uh, or is stored on site? Where Where is the snow going to go? We, we can, there, there, are, there are areas here, and also this area here, where there's the, the thick kid that we can, this, this is also nine foot wide island. We can, we can push the snow off in this area here if we need to. So the snow will impact the number of parking spots? Not, not a parking spot, this area uh, oh, outside the parking spot. Push it on an island? Yes, in this, in this long area. We can push it here. This is nine foot wide. Okay. On the, uh, we look at the, the plan. We widened this from, I think, around six, now it's nine. And then when are we going to hear the testimony about why you should not have a setback? Setback? In, in where? Yeah, on Winston. Uh, here, because yeah. if, if I move the building, even two feet, we cannot accommodate this parking anymore. But this is set, just like this. This is only three feet. This is minimum dimensions already. If we move the building even by two feet, you can, you, we will be in violation of the parking dimension. So why don't you make the building smaller? Let me bring up the architect. Okay. Okay, you can call your next witness. Yeah, Mr. Chudzik. And I do with the pronunciation. Close. Okay. Mine's a funny name, it's Chudzik. Chudzik, okay. Uh, just a quick, uh, just a quick uh, black and white uh, rendering, if you will, 
uh, of the building itself, and then uh, just the, the, uh, the drawing index and the building occupancy, which uh, lays out each bedroom on each floor. Well, I'm going to interrupt you, though. You're doing well as far as I'm concerned. So I may just ask you a couple of things. Sure. So I just take, you said you have a plan that shows surrounding uses. Describe to the board what are the surrounding uses. Well, there's a, there were a couple. Uh, the existing site had an old, I guess, two-family or three-family, I'm not sure. Next to that, to the left of that, there's a, a bodega of some sort. Uh, across the street, there is a large, I believe it's an apartment complex. I'm not 100% sure. It does not show up here as well. I did take the liberty of making a couple 11 by 17s. I can circulate it to the board, uh, one on each side, and then I'll one for yourself. Your question. Who took the pictures? Um, they're actually from Google Maps. I took it this morning. Oh, you took them from Google Maps. That's correct. And as far as you're concerned, do they reasonably and accurately portray the existing condition? Yeah, um, it's before the building was taken down, so you can see the older building that was right. on the site to the right of this picture, but then the building across the street is as it's been for, for many, many years. All right, I would, uh, Mr. Solomon, can I mark that as A1? Yes. And just hand that to the young man at the end of the table. He's still a young man. Yeah. Yeah. So on the right side of that picture is where the, the old building was. It's been taken down across, directly across the street uh, is that the family uh, building. I'm going to ask you a few, and I'm not trying to interrupt your flow. Yeah, the, 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 the building that is proposed, what is it? Tell me this, how many? It's a mixed use, it's a mixed use building. Um, it's uh, on, the level, on the lower level, it's 1398 to be exact, square foot of retail. Uh, and then on that lower level is our su support for the building, meaning we have, well, let me ask, to answer your question, let me go to the our next sheet, which is PL 1.0, which shows the first floor. So Remsen is down at the bottom of, of our sheet. Uh, the retail space I just described comes straight, uh, has an entrance directly off of Remsen. Again, it's 1398 square feet. Um, it has a bathroom and storage area for itself. Uh, to the right of that space uh, on the corner is our lobby, which has a mail room, and of course the elevator, which we are required to have in the building, uh, the main staircase, if you will, off the lobby, uh, and then we have a utility room, which is accessed off that parking lot. Um, I know there was, there was maybe some question about mail. Um, we do have this mail room. I understand that, again, during discussions with the client, um, there would be um, access given to any carriers, whether it's card key or key. Uh, same thing for the tenants of the building. Uh, one more thing over the retail space, because we are required through staircases, we have that other staircase um, tower. The wall that we were speaking of, so again, PL 1.0 does differ slightly from what you have there. There is a wall that basically just fought, continued this line to this first column that we had here. In doing some research, um, we have found that because we're within, uh, within 10 feet, less than 10 feet, when you're in a parking, an open parking area, you're required to have that fire rate. So what we decided to do, since we were um, proposing brick, we decided to say, you know what, let's have the brick just go on back. It's the same depth and thickness as the pier that was already there. I know that the civil engineer said that he needed to do a little bit of, of maneuvering over. It's only because of the backup of the car itself. But again, we lost no parking on that at all. So again, this is this is a different sheet than we would have. So that basically outlines the entire first floor. Could, could you elaborate on the 10 feet from where to where? Uh, for, well, for side, side work requirements, we require if you're less than 10 feet for, for parking lot, you have to have, you have to have a one hour raise for from a, from a parking. Okay, lot. thank you. My next sheet is PL 1.1. Uh, and this is a typical floor plan for the for, for the uh, second, third, and fourth floor. Uh, and again, it, it shows that we have four two-bedroom units and one one-bedroom units. Again, that's per floor, so that gives us the total of 15 units. Um, the two families in as the two excuse me, the two-bedroom and one-bedroom are all open concept uh, living, dining, kitchen. Uh, um, you know, for the open feel, and then also we have. The two bedrooms each have a master suite where you have a bathroom inside the suite itself, along with the closet. Uh, and again, that's our, our PL 1.1. Our PL 2.0 is the front elevation along Remsen, which we saw a small version on a cover sheet. This is exactly what you have now. 
And um, on this front elevation, we're showing the materials. I have a few renderings which I'll share with you about uh, about the building with the colors and the materials, which I'll go into a little bit more in depth. Those, of course, will be new exhibits. Going to the heights, I know some of the, some of the questions to you in the heights. So, to the actual para, to the roof level itself, we are 43 feet. That is to the roof level. Then we have a 36 a 36 inch parapet, so that brings us to 46 feet. And then we have two small uh, projections on top. I'm not going to call them towers because they're only about one foot nine. So that brings us to those little areas, which again are in between uh, on the corners. In, in between, we're at, at you know we're, we're lower than that. Uh, we're at 47 foot nine. So those are those little two are architectural features, which we kind of mimicked with for the buildings that are, the, the, build, the building across the street. It has actually the same sort of architectural features. So we decided to incorporate that. Um, as so, you know, so one sorry. more that I want to clarify. According to the plans, uh, which I've been uh, defined, it says building height max 40 feet, and it says proposed 43 feet. That is correct. But it's not. What is the actual proposed height? Um, my, no, well, my understanding was that we're going to the top of roof. Okay. And it's 43 feet. Okay. And I, I that's I'm okay. sorry. That's right. That's uh, right. So it's where just say 46. You so you. It's, that, so it's and then 43 49. is to the top of roof. 46 is to the, the parapet itself. My understanding for TAC meetings were that we would measure that number to the top of roof. Right, let me clarify. But thank you. If you're talking to the roof, the roof where I could stand, that is correct. the roof where we might have equipment or not, these from the proper measurement of height, whether it's mean or wherever you start mm -hmm. by code, the height is going to be 43 feet. That is correct. And that's less, of course, any math is less than 10%. I want to that. That's Number correct. Number two, the other height is a parapet wall. Is that correct? That is also and correct. And that would be a decorative as opposed to structural? Uh, it, it does have a couple of purposes if we do have some, any kind of equipment on the roof. If we, we keep it towards the middle of the building, it'll, it'll sh right, screen, screen it right. slightly, but also because of our separation, fire separations on, on corners, whatever, we decided to put parapets on. Let me ask you another question, or a dangerous question, because I don't know what you think. Why do we have to go to 40 feet? Well, 43 feet. Um, basically, we're trying to keep the, you know, the floors, the, well, 10 foot 6, we need for the garage, uh, and, and minimum um, for, for fan accessibility. Uh, and then we have nine foot ceilings, for each, uh, each, each apartment, again, uh, today's standards, uh, people are looking for large, large taller ceilings. Uh, and then just the construction in between. So we're figuring somewhere between 14 and 15 inches for the structure, uh, between beams and, 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 and floors. Is the 43 feet consistent, again, with other uh, buildings and structures in the surrounding area? Um, I would say across the street for sure. I did, again, I'm not a planner, but I did drive around the area, there are some more taller buildings down on the opposite side, maybe three, four blocks away. But across the street, as you can see from the picture, that it's consistent with that height directly across the street. Did you do an investigation of the building across the street with regard to visual variances that you could see, the extent they compared with the variances we're requesting on this side? I honestly didn't do that other than just looking at the heights. It's a residence. It's make up. It's, my belief is residence. I haven't been in shop no, no, inside no, it's, it's, it's straight residential. It's not mixed use. That, that's, that's my understanding. Okay. Um, and so it's again, again, parking, sorry, sorry? I know I'm trapping you, but you're, you're handling it so that's far. Right. Uh, is there parking on site across the street? That I do not know. I didn't think. All right, fair. As fair as I can answer that, I'm familiar with that building. It's the St. Mary's Apartments. There's buildings. Oh, the St. Mary's. There's parking in the back. All right, no worries. Right now. back for that apartment. Okay. Thank you for orienting me. No problem. I like to tell people I grew up in the grand city of New Brunswick, so I know it pretty well. Go ahead. Okay, um, once again, uh, the front elevation, uh, we do have the retail space here. We are proposing a sign at the retail space, which is 24 square feet, which would. Um, which is uh, in, would be or within the ordinance itself. I think it could be a little bit larger, but we kind of did proportional to the to the door over the door. Um, so I went over the heights again. I'm going to go over just just again. I have the colors, so I'll go over the materials and colors when I get to the renderings. Uh, 2.1 is our right side elevation. Uh, again, this is what the other side would have looked like with this little pier because we do have the parking underneath. We allowed the cars to come under. So we kept it open on this side. It, 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 
work structurally, you've already checked with the structural engineer. This is what the other side would have looked like, but when we realized, and again, it's the opposite side, we realized that we needed that firewall, uh, then we unfortunately had to fill in the wall. So uh, that's, so basically it's just a, con it's just a consistent uh, facade um, along that, that bottom of the bridge. Those are the actual PL drawings. I have the, I have the rear here, which, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <coughs> the left side is 2.3 in my bed. This is, this is that wall that we were filling, but you can understand the concept. It's just basically a continuation of the bridge. You'll see it better in the color rendering. So first I'll go over the front facade. Now, was that elevation or the next color with the red rendering elevation provided for the board? No, it was, it was not. So these are exhibits. That is correct. All right, so that would, that would be uh, technically, I guess, B and C. Uh, My um, preference would be called A2. You got A2 and A3. Mm -hmm. right, okay. Okay. Uh, A2. Mr. Chairman, I would just ask that I know that they were not provided the prior to the board or to the staff to review, but they are colored renderings, and I think it would be helpful to the board. That's fine. Of course, to me. Sure. Excuse me, Jeremy, you want to call the architectural A2 because the wall that is not shown on the plans that we have? Mm. We can, you want to just call the entire package or just the one page? Just the one page, I would okay. No, I think they were covered by the revision. The 212 they, they, they never made it to the to okay. the board itself. All right, so that's a good catch. So that would be two. Can you find that page, please, just so we don't forget it? The page in your uh, yeah. architectural is the uh, revision to the uh, wall. They call that A2. Put A2 and the date on uh, today's date on that, please. And these will be A3 then? The color rendering that you have there now is A3. A3 and A4. Okay, so this is the front elevation on the corner of Remsen, showing the front here with the retail space and then up, up above. So we're, we're providing brick at the, or proposing brick at the lower level, basically very close to what the building across the street does have. Uh, in between on these architectural features that project about one foot nine above the building. Again, to kind of mimic what the building across the street is doing, uh, we're, we're proposing um, um, stucco panels, uh, prefab panels, not the old stucco that we used to have, but, but uh, dry that makes them, uh, they're ethos panels um, that give you kind of a nice gray look. And then in between, just hardy, hardy siding, um, basically so for, for that residential look. Then of course you have your architectural grade type windows, with the HVAC ornamental um, uh, units above, below, uh, below those windows themselves. Um, and again, this is this is the, the little bodega next door to it, and then uh, the rest of the block down this way, down Remsen, and that would be uh, towards the parking lot side there, which we have the parking lot side shown here. So this would be A4. And that wall that we were speaking of used to be aligned with this column, so there would have been a pier here, and then you would have had nothing up until this point, but we had to just fill this in to the depth of the car itself. Uh, once again, uh, we're showing the same architectural features. We don't have, on this on this pine corner here, because it's really facing outward, uh, we didn't propose that little, that little projection, um, but the materials all the way around are consistent with, as with brick at the bottom, and we have the ethos panels on either side of the the little projections, and then we have the hardy uh, plank um, siding around the rest of the building. And that's basically the building. I think we've covered that. And the FAR, are you familiar with the... Uh, I, I know that we're all right, just I'm not exactly sure the number. Yeah, we can look at your real house. No. So I have a discussion, Mr. Chairman. Hey, member of the board, four professionals have any questions? Just, just to clarify a couple things. Um, on the building height, the city has a definition of building height. It says on a flat roofed building, you measure to the top of the roof, top of the flat roof. So in this case, the building height by the city's definition of how to measure that is 43 feet. It gives an exception for things like elevator penthouses and parapets and things like that. So we don't count the, the, the parapets that they're 
end of the screen, rooftop equipment, and measure it to the top of the room, which is 43 feet. So they do need a variance. Right. The limit is 40 feet. They're proposing 43, so they do need a, a bulk variance for that. Um, just a couple quick questions, just based on some things in the plan report. Um, thing number one is, is there a way to upgrade the quality of materials on the tower elements instead of having stucco panels to have a little bit of a higher quality material? We consider doing metal panels. Uh, we're, we're really trying to, and I know this is going to sound a little odd, considering the buildings larger than most of the buildings in the neighborhood except for one across the street. Um, we just didn't want to get too modern. Um, these panels, uh, they're not, again, your the old Ethos panels when we first, you know, when, when first suit works, they come in and the guys come in and use the coats. They come as prefab panels and they come with a 25 year guarantee. Now, to answer your question, yes. Could we, could, could we consider something? We absolutely could. I'm not, I'm not sure if the board has an idea of, of whether or not it would be metal, you know, or any, types of, any other type of material, but we could consider it if, if the board uh, would ask for it. Sure. I mean, I don't mean to take the pencil out of the architect's hand. It's, you know, you can propose or to come up with different ideas, but we typically don't recommend putting plastic siding or this stucco on the front facade of buildings. If you could do it in the, in the rear facade or in a place that's utilitarian and no one's going to see, that's that's fine. If it's an economical, uh, you know, situation there to save some money on the construction costs, but on the front facades, and in this case you have two fronts, uh, we'd like to see the higher quality, more durable, more attractive. So there are, there are and what, what did you say you prohibited? You had mentioned to the stucco itself and then plastic the siding and, and, and stucco beefus. There are, there, are, there are metal products that actually mimic these, look, that look. Uh, the, and we could definitely consider that in order to keep the, the character in terms of the color and that kind of grain, kind of just, to, again, match, match the, the building across the street. We, we absolutely can consider that. Yeah. And then, could you just go back to the floor plan on the ground floor? Because there was a comment in the report about providing a secure way for parcel delivery persons to get in and deliver their parcels to the storage room, mail room, without having access to the residential parts of the lobby, so that those persons only have access to get into the parcel room, do their delivery, and not have the ability to go up an elevator or in a stairwell or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I apologize, I didn't see it. Was that part of the tech uh, comments? Because I don't recall seeing it. Yeah, there's a comment. Um, <laughs> 10J just says the lobby package area should be clarified. How will this be secure? Will the delivery person freely enter the lobby? What will prevent un unauthorized persons from accessing the elevators and stairways? The resident lobby should provide a secure area for parcel delivery separate from the residential access. Who we use uh, uh, cards and or uh, Well, that's not that our discussion. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a number of, uh, of the other multifamilies that, that, that have that. You know, you get the you guest guide, the post office guide. He has his own car key and he'll really access the door because I'm assuming the door will be locked, you know, depending on, on the times of the day. Um, and that was, again, was, was discussed in length at the TAC, the TAC meeting. Uh, I thought that was going to be sufficient. Uh, that's what we did at the mail room. Again, if it becomes something of, of, of an issue, I could speak with the client. We could very easily take this mail room and move it up on the Remsen and have it actually access from Remsen and then also from the lobby. The idea is not to, to, to not have a mail room. I think the mail room is, you, you need one for a building of this size. The idea is that if an Amazon person who's never been there before delivers to that mail room, that they can get in and do that delivery, but they can't go in the lobby and then go in the building and have access to a residential area. So however you want the designer to laid out to keep those two things separate, I can certainly leave that to you. But the idea is that we don't have you know, uh, an unauthorized person, give them, you know, we're not giving them access to the residential parts of the Is there, is there contemplated a, an intercom or something, so if I come no. into I mean, the... I, I, honestly, intercom, once, I mean, the first, if the person's not home, then they don't get the delivery, I'm not sure if that would be... No, I mean, so let's assume I'm visiting uh, somebody on the third floor. Now, when I come to the building, uh, I, can I get in the lobby? So that's the question. I get into the lobby, I can take a, an elevator to any of the floors and to any of the apartments. Uh, if it is locked and the delivery person gets into the delivery area, that's fine, because he or she cannot then go from the delivery room into the lobby. 
So I think the question that I'm hearing is, is there some way to restrict movement either into the lobby or if you get in the lobby, restricting the access to the elevators? Todd, am I, is that Sure, it, it could be designed multiple ways, but the idea is that we're keeping those two things separate. Right, but so it's not access to the Allowing access to the lobby is not, I guess, I don't think that's really where you guys are, are not going. Because that's what I'd say. The lobby would be card key. So the only way in would be if that delivery person had a card key. Or a code, depending on how they work. And then, obviously, elevators and doors nowadays, we use the card keys on those too. However, we could, like I said, we could possibly redesign this where that wouldn't even be an issue where the mail room would definitely be accessed only from, from the outside. said that's more of buzzing somebody that is actually home. Whereas a delivery person, when they'll all come to somebody to be at work, they won't be able to get that person. So well there are two ways to do that, Mr. Chairman. A uh you are in a home and just side here, drop hub and Uber and all this. The other way is for the delivery person to tell the person to call them when he or she gets there and then the recipient of the grub has to come down and get it in the lobby, uh, or they say, we'll be there in 10 minutes, you have to be there to let us out. I mean, I really think the, the telephone call from the delivery person to the recipient may be the answer. But I don't think we, I, I don't think we should waste your time. I think it's a, uh, a design of a program that has to fit uh, Todd's uh, criteria. Right, just making sure that that area as they enter is secure. They can't go any further than the St. Mary's apartments across the street has an area where you go in two double doors, there's a, a, a buzzer on the side for each apartment, you place that buzzer obviously, but, but you, and, the, and the second door is to go into the elevator. Right. The apartment. So you should consider something like that, having something secure so that they, they can't go any further and access elevators. I think that the answer is, and I don't say yes to everything, so I don't think I'm a yes person, just to try to get an approval. I, I think this is uh, a, a smart question. Uh, and I, I think that as a condition, we would satisfy uh, the reasonable requirements of Todd and come up with a plan. I mean, we could spend another hour oh, on your thing. No, I, mean, I think the car key is a good one, but there's other things too. Whatever the city wants feels more comfortable. Throw rocks at the window, you know, pebbles, and then they'll have to look out and they'll see the. The, 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 the grub guy. As a condition of approval, we can look into it and, and, and have it and redesign it and submit it to the board. Uh, okay. So along those same lines, because the primary issue is the safety of the residents, the right. safety of the citizens of New Brunswick. So I think we've clarified like the safety thing with the lobby and people being able to access and that will be a condition most likely. What about the safety with like the light? Because I can't figure out the lighting that's going on with the parking and the wall, and like, it just seems like there are a lot of things for people to hop. Well, I can, I can answer for for no. If I'm wrong, please correct me, because um, we obviously work in conjunction with this. So we have lights on in front of above all the entrances, which was submitted. Um, the part under the building, because there is parking under the building, there are lights that are there under the building also. And then there are also, there are also lights in the parking lot itself, correct? Um, and it, uh, I'm not sure how many, but I believe it satisfies the foot camera that we're on the water. So the whole site is going to be lit, and then I believe, again, I apologize, but the lights that are on in the parking lot, there's the ones that obviously are under, the, that don't have the screen, but they will be screened properly to light the parking lot itself, but not leave open the Are they motion activated or will it be on from dusk to dawn? I believe they I believe they'll be dust to dawn in the parking lot. Okay, yeah. right? Dust to dawn in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, a faded lighting with the wall? Like, did the wall impact the lighting at all? Because of the wall, stop. Uh, not really, because we have we have two lights in front of these. This and the walls right here, right along this. So by the time you get past here, you've got the lights that are here and then you have the site lighting back here. We talk, I mean, we say wall, it's 20 feet. So it's basically, you know, from 
when yeah. we go through there. So they did submit a lighting plan, oh. and, and it okay. does cover all of the parking area, both the part that's under the building and the part that's open to the air. Mm -hmm. The only not lit area would be on the sort of the outside of that wall that's far left of the um, of the, of the drawing. So the wall is on the left or left, side. Left, side. left left side. No, no, the wall goes from the floor to the ceiling, so that's the wall is sort of in alignment with that last or leftmost parking space. Um, so we could ask them to just put some wall pack lighting on yeah. the outside of the wall. The only thing is we just have to be aware that um, the building next door yeah. is three or four feet from the property line, and this is about five feet. So we just want to just be aware that we're not sort of shining the light into somebody's living room or bedroom or something like that. So. You know, I believe we can still those wall packs will work with Noel, and then we'll make sure that whatever the foot can allow will bleed over is will be compliant with. So we could review that wall design and stuff like that. Whatever, whatever you want, if, when I come back, we'll bring it back. You said you wanted to review the wall, the new wall? Yeah. That new wall that you're proposing. Submit before the next hearing so we could take a look at that wall we're proposing. Why don't we have to? If you, I, I, if you want us to resubmit, we will resubmit. I don't know whether we I, have I think to they're move. asking for submission of plans that show that wall so they can review them. Just update it. All right. No, that is not a problem. I, uh, my young architect is having ankle surgery, so he would not be able to be here. However, we would have the revised drawings which uh, the engineer could describe. I have no problem with that. So Mr. Chairman, if I may, just a recommendation. It, it seems like with all of the um, items the board has discussed so far, it might make sense for the applicant to 
make the floor plan changes on the ground floor, to make the facade upgrades that they're talking about, maybe just to show the board what the different options are, and, and add them all onto the plans and just come back with a full package of corrections and information, information and then you can present it and hear the planning testimony and then make your decision. No, I'd like to, yes, I know I know. I also have another comment. Over on Remsen Avenue, was paved in 2023, December of 2023. Can you put your, your utility on Talmish? Because there's a five year moratorium on it, so unless you're going to wait five years, I'm not sure. Yeah, there was another solution to that, but I didn't understand. Infrared, but again. I didn't understand if you don't have an engineer. I don't know. Yeah. Can we put it on the town on the other street? If there's a petitioning me in the sunny side, the sunny side and walk and leave in town meet, then of course. Yeah, we can So that will be part of your next position? Yeah, that will be part of your next position. Any other member of the board have any questions for the two witnesses here? Professionals? Mr. Chairman, if I could just yes. recap uh, what we want to do, because I have a recorder and I can. The recap is A, we have a revised plan showing the knee wall, A. B, we have a revised plan showing the first floor area with the lobby uh, and the mailroom delivery and come up with some type of a entry solution. Uh, next, we have uh, the, uh, a planner with regard to, a planning testament with regard to the, principally the FAR, also the height and the, uh, the other variances, including the important one, which is Parking. We also have an elevation of revised and submitted that shows a uh, upgraded material uh, for the elevations to two fronts. Uh, have I missed anything, Mr. Chairman or Todd or? The, the utilities. Ah, you see I can count on you. And the, the revised uh, utility plan showing that we're going to uh, connect at Town Street. Now aware of the issue with regards to the what would happen is have to take the five-year moratorium and next week PSE and G or someone comes in and cuts the street anyway and then we have to deal with that. But yes, have I covered it all now? Yeah. Good. Do we know when the next meeting is? So the next meeting is... But, uh, but the subject, there's a sign guideline on top of it. Huh? You have to check that. Yeah. There's none. Yeah, when you come back, you'll let us know. Yeah. yeah. If there is none, we'll have yeah, to deal 20th. with it. May 20th. Yeah, the next one is because uh, it's the third Wednesday, May, it's the other one's Memorial Day conference, so May 20th. May 20th, that's yeah. further notice. Correct, right, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. And no, we, we, we don't because testimony is not done, so the public comment on this hearing will happen at the next meeting. Okay. I just want to confirm no, no further public notice. No further. Do I need, do you need an extension? Hmm? you need an extension of time to act? Uh, I, I would prefer if you granted one. Email just confirming granting that extension. Uh, only because you're a good guy. Yeah. Uh, so uh, May 31st or June 5th? Okay. May 31. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Welcome, gentlemen. I, I apologize. I think we would have had to come back anyway, but I apologize. I'm trying to put a new system in in my office, so this doesn't happen again. I'm going to wait too long to make the decision. No problem. May 20th. 20th? Yeah, because Memorial Day would conflict. Yes, So not the 28th of Tuesday, but the previous Monday, the 20th. Yes. Let's May, let's just May 2 it. 0, right? I have it on the third Monday in May, which is the 20th. That's our typical thing to do, the third Monday for Memorial Day. And the following Monday is Memorial Day, so it obviously isn't that the 27th. <laughs> but no, we're scheduled for the 20th. That's our regular meeting. Um, I, on the ones that I have that's posted, it says public notice, the following date, May 28th, and then the parentheses says May 27th, college. Oh, oh. I took a picture of it because yeah, yeah, that's what I have too. Oh, that's yeah. odd. Yeah, yeah, the following day. Because you got to Tuesday. Well, so we need to resolve it now. 
to avoid a. Yeah. Okay. Case. So Tuesday, May twenty eighth. Sorry. That was saying typical of us, but May, Tuesday, May twenty eighth. May two eighth. Yes. May twenty eighth. The day Germany, after tomorrow. May twenty eighth. Okay. All right. Five twenty eighth. May twenty eighth. May twenty eighth. Five five two eight two four. 